Today, more than 40 million Americans proudly claim Irish ancestry, but what a lot of people don't always think about is why their ancestors immigrated to the United States. For many, it was the great hunger of the 1800s. Ireland's Great Hunger Museum at Quinnipiac University educates people on the causes of this tragic period in history while showcasing Irish art, artifacts, and literature of that time. Joining me now on Connecticut Style is the executive director, Grace Brady. Welcome to the show, Grace. Thanks so much. Tell us about the museum. I know it opened in October, so it's still fairly new. It's very new. We're open in five months now and the goal of the museum is twofold one is as you mentioned to educate the public about the great hunger from 1845 to 52 and then secondly is to showcase um, first-rate Irish art you know the Irish get a lot of accolades for music and literature and playwriting but you don't see the visual arts um, showcased as much and we want to show that there really are tremendous artists out there. Sure, well, let's get into the history a little bit of it. So mm -hmm. the Great Hunger was happening 1845 to 1852. Right. I suppose, tell us about this time in history. Well, in Ireland, there were famines prior to this, but they weren't as severe as this one. Um, a fungus was caused, uh, a fungus uh, happened on the potato crop and many of the Irish subsisted solely on the potato crop. So the okay. severity of it made um, for mass starvation and the response of the British government was not significant enough at all, mm -hmm. which created even further um, deaths and um, horrible situations for the Irish, which caused emigration and death. Okay. Um, why would you say it's so important for people to learn about this? I'm sure it really caused a domino effect in history. Right. Um, many people think that the, when they hear the famine, uh, that it was just a fail of a potato crop. And it's much more than that. There were politics and economics involved. And really, it's our goal to get this, the true story out and that people should be educated on the real history of that period of time sure. and how it did affect Ireland and the countries where people emigrated to. All right, let's take a look at some pictures uh, from the museum. Uh, and Great. you could tell me what we're looking at here. This is um, a video wall that we have. It's based on illustrations we have in the collection. At that time, the way people learned about um, the news was through illustrated newspapers, the Illustrated okay. London News, Harper's Weekly, and things like that. And this, we just um, electronically have shown some of those in our collection and some of the text and the images surrounding it. And it's based on themes in the poverty, hunger, eviction, and things like that. Okay. And this next one shows... This is um, one of my favorites in the collection. It's by Lillian Davidson, and it's called Burying the Child. And it's really a beautifully executed painting, but a harrowing depiction of parents burying their deceased child. And it sort of has the Picasso blue period uh, feel to it as well. Okay. And then... Uh... This is um, a bronze sculpture by John Behan, who's a Galway artist, and it's called Famine Cart. And it's uh, literally basically um, skeletons and deceased people being um, brought to graves or... Um, wow, what a, what a difficult time. Uh, what type of help did Ireland get through this? There was, um, well, many would say, and it's true, that the British government didn't do enough to help uh, the people, but there were other groups. The Quakers were very helpful to the Irish. Money was sent from Turkey, from New York Jewish communities. So it's an interesting um, time that different groups of people really help the Irish. And in May, we have a scholar, Christine Keneally, who's the renowned scholar of the famine. She's a visiting professor at the university this spring. She'll be giving a lecture on charity during the famine period. Okay. Um, if we could put that picture back up, it was our final picture. It had a wall of images, it looked like. Oh, yes. That's, we call that the illustration wall, and that's behind the video wall that we just saw. And okay. those are the actual um, illustrated news framed uh, to depict the time. Where do all the artifacts come from? Where did this, how did it develop? Uh, yeah, it developed over 10 years ago. John Leahy, the president of Quinnipiac, uh, is Irish American and he felt uh, strongly about this issue and he was discussing it with um, an alum from Quinnipiac, Murray and Marvin Lender, who are Jewish and felt that they had never heard this story. They had heard the Holocaust story, but they never heard the great hunger and they felt the need that it was important to get it out. Sure. So they gave some seed money to start a room in the library and the collection started from there and over the 10 or 15 years it's grown tremendously 
and thus the museum was built. Great. Um, Grace, you have a free event happening on March 28th, a poetry reading. Tell us yes. some of the details. Um, Desmond Egan is a, an Irish poet, and our education department at Quinnipiac is sponsoring it, and it's at 5 o'clock on March 28th, and okay. it's free. Reservations are required. and. We hope to see many people there. Sounds great. Let's put that information back up on the screen. Uh, Ireland's Great Hunger Museum. It's at Quinnipiac University. You can register for the event or you can call 203-582-6500 or visit IGHM.org. Correct. Very good. Grace, thanks for being here and sharing the story. Thanks so much for having me. All right, coming up next, we're heading into the kitchen. Sophia Khan and Dr. Ellen Bass share some of their, of their favorite Irish-inspired recipes. When style returns, don't go anywhere. <laughs>